to Bryant. Buckle up for Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant just sucked the gravity out of the target center. He was trying to jam in Minneapolis in the playoffs last year, hurt the shoulder, went through the playoffs, off-season oh. shoulder surgery, and that is the same shoulder. Left-handed shot. Left wow. Yeah, that right arm, boy, it's just there. That's on his shooting shoulder. But it's just a sore right shoulder is what the Lakers are calling it. Kobe has gone back to the locker room. That will be the topic of conversation throughout the next day or so. That's where the damage is to your cuff. This dark area here, that's, that's the rotator cuff cable. It's not attaching to bone here. It's going to get worse. And what's best for your shoulders is to get it fixed soon. Oh God, I just don't know what we'll do with another fucking nine months or some shit. And then the doctor's office and saying, hey, this is a nine month process. And I just go, uh, <laughs> I just did this. <laughs> I, I just did this. Nine months. I just did nine months. I gotta do it again. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Nav Badesha. In today's episode, we're gonna be dissecting every single shoulder injury Kobe had and diving a little bit deeper into the anatomy and the physiology behind these injuries. Mamba had two shoulder surgeries over the course of his 20 year career, but even his closest diehard fans might be shocked to learn just how many times he was shouldering more of a load than you knew. By the end of this video, you'll have a newfound respect for just how tough the Black Mamba was and why I think he's one one of the toughest athletes of all time. Before we get into each individual injury, let's review a few key anatomical structures of the shoulder. Here's the capsule of the right shoulder. This is the glenoid fossa, AKA the socket. Around it is this rim of soft tissue or cartilage that helps to stabilize it called the labrum. Around the shoulder are these four muscles of the rotator cuff, also called the sits muscles, which allows us to move our shoulders. The first documented time Kobe injured his shoulder was on April 22nd, 2003 in the first quarter of game two of the Lakers playoff series against the Minnesota Timberwolves. It came on this dunk attempt over seven footer Rasho Nesterovic. You'll see him jam the ball up against the rim and listen to the commentator here. Kobe's holding his shoulder, almost tore his arm out of socket right there. If you watch this clip in slow motion, you'll see as the ball gets jammed against the rim, his shoulder recoils backwards right here. Take a listen to his reaction when this occurs. <laughs> He grips his shoulder after the play and tests the range of motion. This recoil of the shoulder is called a subluxation of the glenoid or shoulder socket. This is when the joint comes out of the socket for a split second, but instead of being dislocated, it goes right back into the joint. We know Kobe didn't dislocate this because he kept playing through it and he didn't need to have it pop back in directly after this play. And he also nailed both of his free throws. It's likely the sheer force of this subluxation led to a small tear in the labrum called a slap tear but it's likely it was minor at this point. Kobe re-aggravated this labral injury later in the series during his iconic reverse dunk. While he's up in the air, he's moving towards the right. Just look at where his head and arm is with respect to the hoop here. He has two seven footers surrounding him. You see KG and Rasho Nesterovic. As we advance the clip, you'll see him extend the right arm all the way out to shield the ball against the defender. And this is absolutely insane because as he continues to fall to the right, he torques that shoulder into the opposite direction and windmills the ball home. You can imagine the load and stress that this puts on the shoulder joint when he torques it in the opposite direction of where he's falling. The magnitude of this force likely further tore that labrum, which can progress from a minor slap tear to a complete separation of the glenoid labrum from the glenoid socket as pictured here. You can see at the end of the play, he grabs that joint and tests the range of motion again. Kobe would play through 10 playoff games with this injury before the Lakers were eliminated by the San Antonio Spurs in the second round, ending their three-peat run. How much harder will you work in this offseason now to get back to the championship? I push myself to exhaustion. In the off season, Mamba had an MRI that revealed a labral tear. He had an operation where the joint capsule is sewn to the detached glenoid labrum. Kobe was able to join the new look Lakers in their second game of the 2003-2004 regular season. Lakers started that season on a tear, winning 18 of their first 21 games before Shaq and Karl Malone both had some injuries. 
<clears throat> on January 12, 2004, Kobe played his first game against LeBron. Unfortunately, his day was cut short because he ended up re-injuring that surgically repaired labrum. In slow motion, you'll see as Kobe raises that shoulder up to shoot, Kendrick Brown's hip drills that shoulder, forcing it inward here. This moment causes a repeat subluxation, which again rips that shoulder joint out of the socket here for a split second. Kobe would nail his two free throws, but then ended up leaving the game. The Lakers were ravaged with injuries, and they would actually lose 12 of their next 20 games after that 18-3 and start. Kobe was supposed to be out for much longer, but he came back 12 days later against the Utah Jazz on the 24th of January after missing only six games. After the second game back, Bryant admitted his shoulder was bothering him and he said, it goes dead through certain parts of the game, but I just have to shake it off. Based on what he said here, it's likely he was dealing with a brachial plexus nerve injury highlighted in blue, either from the original injury or as a complication from the surgery that he had. Bryant is very fortunate because this specific injury caused issues with motor function and movement as well as sensation all the way down to the fingers. On March 5th, 2004, Kobe re-injured that shoulder against the Supersonics after colliding with Reggie Evans when attempting to fight through a pick. Lakers training staff expected Kobe to miss one month after this. Fortunately, he had an AC sprain. The AC joint is localized to this area here, which is outside of the shoulder capsule and labrum. Kobe came back after missing just two games and he ended up suiting up against our rival, Boston Celtics, and he'd lead us to victory. Instead, of sitting out four weeks, he ended up playing 39 minutes a game, and he led the Lakers to win 12 of their next 13 games. He'd be wearing the shoulder compression sleeve, which can help to stabilize the joint. Lakers would make it to the NBA Finals this year and lose to the Detroit Pistons, even though they were a heavy favorite to win. Two Shackless Finals victories later, flash forward to January 21st, 2015. It's believed Kobe exacerbated his shoulder issue on this play, and it's subtle, but notice, when Kobe dunks the ball, the defender attempts to block the shot, and his right arm comes down on Kobe's right shoulder, which leads to excessive external rotation of that shoulder. Notice his hand and shoulder joint recoil backwards here. After icing it, he would come back into the game in the fourth quarter, but got pulled from the game when the coaching staff realized he was only playing with his left hand. Kobe would be shut down for the third consecutive season due to a season-ending injury. There's four muscles for your cuff. There's one here, two, three, four. This is pulled off. Torn and pulled off. Number three that's pulled off here. I've had this pain for a long time, man. It's just I've never actually gotten looked at because the strength was so good. The reason he was able to keep playing through it is because of the part of the rotator cuff that was torn. This guy here is the infraspinatus. An isolated tear here doesn't cause significant range of motion or strength limitations, so it's likely Kobe was able to adjust his jump shot and compensate with the other muscles. Kobe would have surgery in late January, and about seven months later, he'd be back in the gym putting shots up. He'd play on opening day of what would be his final NBA season on October 28th, 2015. And he'd also go on to prove to himself and the rest of the world that he could come back from back to back to back season ending injuries and leave the game on his own accord by dropping 60 points in his final NBA game that season. What can I say? Mamba out. If I sit there and have to face myself and tell myself, you know, you're, you're, you're a failure, I think that's, that's a worse, that's almost worse than death.